Hey folks, today we're going to be carving a stick, but not just any stick, a hiking stick. And not just any old hiking stick, a wood spirit hiking stick. Let's do it. Uh, yes, but not so fast. A quick word of warning for those of you out there who are sticklers for just using knives. This is a knife mostly project. Okay, so we use the knife for the majority of the project. You're probably wondering what the other tool is that I'm talking about. Well, it's a Dremel. A Dremel. Well, this is a Ryobi. It doesn't matter. I've got it linked in the description below. Uh, this is probably my new favorite uh, uh, rotary tool. I don't really use rotary tools a lot, but I just use the ball tip that the Dremel and the Ryobi come with to make it uh, pretty straightforward. So if you have one of those, uh, then by all means, enjoy the video. If you don't, you can't follow along until the very end, right? Mostly the hair. Okay, keep that in mind. Let's do it. All right, so we're starting with this 58 inch long by one and a half inch wide piece of, I believe it's oak or maybe even hickory. It's super hard, super heavy. I'm not exactly sure to be honest. It could even be ash. I don't know. I'm really unable to tell because I haven't really cut into it all that much yet. But that being said, um, I'm going to try and find a spot that isn't wormy. This has a bit of a worm problem, as you can see, these little divots. And uh, I've kind of decided that I'm going to uh, carve it down on the base of the uh, stick somewhere down below. And so let's get into it. Of course, talking about the tools that we're using, we're just going to keep it super uber simple. We have a ruler, we have a marker, and uh, there it is. <laughs> and we have a knife. I'm going to use a uh, rough out sweep from uh, Helvey. Uh, in this case, uh, again, it's a very hard wood, so I'm going to try to use the best possible tools that I have. Uh, for the uh, project, and uh, that's that. Let's get into it. All right, so I'm uh, I'm gonna say, gosh, about a foot or maybe ten inches away from the end of the stick, only because uh, it's a wormy piece of wood, and a lot of the holes are existing up in the second half here or this upper part. I would normally probably put it a little bit higher on the uh, stick, but we're gonna put it a little bit lower in this case because, again, trying to avoid those worm holes. But I digress. First thing I want to do, draw a line. I'm going to draw a straight line across the piece of wood, like so. And uh, take my knife. Again, I've got the rough out knife. And again, oof, that's a hard piece of wood. Not playing around. In fact, it's a great idea if you don't have a glove uh, on at this point, especially if you're carving in an unknown material, like often you'll get when you're carving a hiking stick. You're going to want to use a glove. If it makes you uh, feel any better, um, I'll put mine on just to, just to in, in an act of uh, unity with those of us wearing gloves. See? All right, I'm going to do my best not to bump the camera, although uh, this is a little bit of a, of a sticky situation. Uh -huh. My humor, you gotta hand that to me. I'm a, I'm a comedian, right? Okay, no, I get it. It's, oh boy, I'll stick to wood carving. It's fine. All right. Ooh, I hit a punky spot, which I like. I like getting a punky spot in this case because, man, this is rock hard. This must be ironwood. I don't know if the guy who sold me this stick was trying to prank me. But uh, I bought it online, and uh, there's an inherent danger with buying wood on the internet. And I was in a bind for this particular piece. I needed it for a project uh, that was randomly uh, pressing. In other words, uh, it was something that uh, needed to be uh, made in a short period of time, and I didn't have the sticks for it. So it's actually for the Bengals, for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. I made uh, three sticks for their some sort of award ceremonies, and I think they still use them in some of their traditions. So anyway, I came across this line, made a stop cut, like so, came in about, I'm going to say, a quarter of an inch. So notice the angle, I'm coming in at an angle, so not straight in, but slightly tipping it up and cutting in, like so. Okay. My goodness, that is a hilariously 
hard piece of wood. Hey, those of you who have said, Alec, I'd love to see you carving something harder. I'm not sure what this is, but I don't think that it's oak. I don't think, you know, hickory actually might not be a bad guess because it is just absolutely shocking how hard it is. And it's fairly light as well. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe wood experts out there can identify it from just seeing this video. Um, anyhow, so as I said, I've just come on either side of this stop cut. Hopefully you can see that. And, uh, and started to kind of create almost a, a very soft V. It's like a 140 degree V or some 130 degree V. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, no, uh, it's, it's slightly V'd like that in other words. So two bars and I came in on either side here, especially deep on either side here and here. There it is. Focus is acting up a bit. And uh, I'm gonna come in just about, uh, say three eighths of an inch from, or I'm sorry, uh, let's say three quarters of an inch from this line that we've already established. All right, and let's mark there. Okay, let's try that, see how that looks. Use the pause there, I was checking my reference drawing. All right, so I'm gonna take uh, at that line, maybe just below that line, it looks a little short to me, if you ask me. Uh, I'm going to uh, take my knife and do a little stop cut underneath there. Okay, actually kind of make a bit of a V, but an upward turning V in this case now. See that? About a quarter of an inch of depth there. Not super deep, okay. We've got that, very good, okay. so. The next thing that I want to do is I want to actually bring the forehead down. Believe it or not, this is not the forehead. This is the hairline. So I'm going to take this up just a little higher. Unbelievably sharp. Or hard, sorry, not sharp. The tool is sharp. It's just an excellent tool, but it's, uh, I mean, it is almost no match with this wood. Yeah, on a really hard piece of wood like this, it's actually quite easy to hurt yourself, so be careful. I'm gonna come in just below, just below this uh, line. So, I'll redraw it, because you probably can't quite tell where it was. I'm gonna say it's probably about here. About, uh, oh, say uh, 3 eighths of an inch from there. And uh, come down like so. All right, so I've made that mark, three eighths inch from our first line, something like that. I just extend it over. But if you had a smaller sharpie, that'd be even better, really, because, well, you just uh, don't have to worry about such thick lines. So now I'm going to come in and make a V cut right at that line, just like so. Taking a little chunk here all the way across. And it's a, again, it's a, it's a V, but it's a pretty soft uh, V. In other words, I've got uh, pretty flat angles meeting uh, each other to create that V. And I'm gonna come across just like so, like that, see that? Just like that, and here as well. Incredible how hard this wood is. Have I mentioned that yet? All right. But we're gonna tough it out as we as we do here in uh, these videos. Just keep moving forward. All right, so I'm gonna reestablish this first cut that we made. Maybe raise it just a tiny bit because I like the idea of it being a little taller. And when you've got a little area of rot on one side, it's easy for you to get too deep with the cuts. In other words, like it's a tool will do more. And uh, 
so it's nice to be able to oh be able to uh temper that by checking your work constantly so this is what we've got so far and uh let me just say i love putting wood spirits in pieces of found wood i enjoy it so much so i hope you do too all right so it's at this point we've got our little rough out in you know i can take a little more of uh, the uh this initial cut that we made or actually sorry this is the third cut so just to review since i said a confusing thing and i want to make it as simple as possible first cut we we uh followed along a straight line and then we took the, the line and we started to bend it as we cut it in you could have drawn it as a soft v to start i just wanted to keep it simple and we're just coming around like so all right so it's a little bit of a downward sort of turning line and uh then i came in about uh three quarters of an inch from the top of that line and made a little v notch here all right that's actually the bottom of my nose and then i came in and uh I created an, a secondary groove that's about three eighths of an inch from this initial line that we made. So I went down three eighths of an inch and then I cut another kind of groove in with a V cut all the way across like so. And, uh, and now, well, that's where we are. So the next thing I want to do is, uh, kind of define the, uh, beard, right? Cause if he's a wood spirit, He's got a beard and a mustache. So in this case, I want to define the uh, mustache. And at the same time, uh, in doing so, I'm also establishing the mustache line as it meets the cheek. So I'm going to come in. If it helps, you can draw a draw line first, although I'm not a huge fan. I think I'm going to stick to my pencil in future videos because this is just too thick of a line. Really, the reason I tried this is because I, I, uh, I want it to be easier to see for folks but this gives you the idea right coming in with the, uh, with the knife along these lines actually creating a uh, a v so i'll draw that here so it looks like from the side boom boom right two v's on either side of that nose right that kind of meet up with the side of the nose and uh, i'm gonna come in there and here here and here makes it a bit of a challenge when you can't quite move the piece of wood around because it's got this long shaft that keeps going right so that being said you have to be a little bit careful about how you articulate the knife especially in these harder woods um okay so done that and now i'm coming in on the inside of that line and i'm reducing wood to make it so that this mustache ooh, excuse my reach there almost out of the frame so that the cheek area comes down further in and that this uh side of the line stays out so what we're doing is we're ensuring that the mustache and beard grow out of the face and not are not set in the face right because i would not be wouldn't be the way it works right here grows on top of the face you're like duh that's not news alec you're right you're right it sounds silly now that i say it you know that <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> just finally getting over about with the dreaded virus that which we sh the name of which we should not speak of. And uh, so I still have a bit of a cough. Although I'm better. I've been better for two or three days now. It's about time to get back in that sauna. That's what I'm looking forward to after this. I'm going to go for a nice sauna. So if you're in the uh, northern parts of Europe, you have the cooler climates. Uh, you have uh, a great reason to... Uh, get in your sauna, right? Because if you're Swedish, I think more people in in those parts of the world, the Scandinavian countries, have saunas than don't, right? I think that's true. So enjoy your sauna after this, you. <laughs> so anyway, 
Um, this is uh, basically, I'm just coming along the forehead here and just bringing it back. And yeah, I know it is kind of a challenge with this wood to see what's going on because it is a uh, kind of striated wood. It has a lot of character. I think that's good. But for video, it can be a little tough. So I understand that it might be challenging to see what's going on. But uh, here's where we're at. I'll try my best to clear the wood around it so it doesn't distract from the shapes that we have. Okay. You can see, yeah, it's really punky on this side. But hard as a rock here. So I'm going to measure about three quarters of an inch from one side of the head to the other. And... Uh, Let's see. We might even go with an inch. Let's do that. So I'm going to take the half inch mark and line that up with the center of my nose, like so. And I'm going to make a mark on either side. Uh, I'm going to stop this and grab my pencil because I can't stand this marker. And we're back. And uh, I grabbed something maybe even a little better than a pencil. That's a uh, felt tip pen. So I'm going to mark my center line on the face. Line up the half inch mark there and draw a line on either side of that half inch. So there's half inch segments, two of them. Goodness, it's hard to see because of that grouping of lines. It's almost comical. So I'm going to extend it up here so I can really see it because it's just so many uh, lines of spalting. So now you can see sort of, it looks natural now. Hopefully you're not working with a piece of wood this, uh, <coughs> difficult on your first try because <clears throat> that might make it confusing but this is the line I'm just gonna extend it down okay and this is gonna be the side of the face so I'm pushing in and I'm taking some material away the goal is to create the side planes of the of the of the forehead you see what I'm doing there okay kind of hard to See, on that side, it'll be much easier here. So, going in, like so. Beautiful. It's like carving bone. Shocking. And remember, uh, someone wrote in and said that they were using the glove, as they should. They slipped with the knife, and they cut themselves. It is possible. I'm gonna flip this thing around. It is possible to uh, cut yourself. So be careful, even through the glove. The glove is not foolproof. The glove helps, right? Prevents, prevents anything really bad from happening. I'm turning this on its side because I want to get the, the leverage uh, to be able to do both sides evenly. Okay. So, right. So if I turn this back around, <laughs> it's, it's pretty zoomed in. Excuse the uh, struggle to move around this uh, stick here. It's a bit of an issue to film. All right. Now you can see the profile, right? And these are shallow cuts compared to our basswood carvings because this piece of wood is so hard that it's going to be hard to get anything in a short period of time. And so I'm just doing my best to try and get a decent result in the time frame that we have, right? And uh, this is going to be good. It's uh, might be riding the struggle bus on the harder wood, but think about the way it will hold up for years to come, right? As long as you keep it dry. Okay, so now I'm going to just come along, clean up forehead, slightly rounding it out a bit, no? Okay. And uh, if you've seen any of the other face carving videos, you'll see there are a lot of similar elements in this project to those. And so it's the joy of carving the face is you can apply, um, you know, many of the, of the methods or techniques into other faces and get different results just by virtue of not being perfect. <laughs> Each time you make something, you'll Kind of be off a little bit in a new way. So now I'm going to make a little indentation, a little cut straight in here. And about a half an inch over here. Like so. Going straight in. Not all that far in with just the tip. So 
less than, oh goodness, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. Here and here, okay? And if I turn this on its side and I make a plunge cut, like so, and then a, it's actually called a triangle cut. I've been calling it a pyramid cut, but uh, I remain corrected. I went online, I Googled it. <laughs> and in the chip carving world, this is not called a pyramid cut. Uh, it's called a triangle cut. So see what I did there? A little bit of an excavation there to make the profile of the nose. So we'll do the same thing here. So I went in like so, straight. Now I'm coming perpendicular to that cut at an angle. And I'm getting that triangle. And it makes sense. Most pyramids are not three-sided, they're four-sided. So, silly me. Surprised that I passed geometry. Okay. Again, thanks for your patience on this one. It's a bit of a struggle to hold it and to uh, get a good camera shot. Is that clear? Yeah, good, all right. So it's at this point that uh, we can start to consider the um, mustache, or I want the mustache to stand away from the beard a little. So I'm gonna take my knife and continue the line of the mustache down, like so. Okay, and we want this face to sort of appear to be nestled in there as if he always was. And so I'm just gonna kind of round off the beard. And you know, just like so, just tuck it in. Take a little bit more out of the side of his face, like so. Yeah, that's the idea. Don't want to carve towards your hand here. This would actually be an excellent candidate for power carving, which brings me to the fact that I have not talked about power carving almost at all in any of these videos. So I'm going to uh, be due for a power carving video soon. So it's at this point, I want to create my classic V cut. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a literal V, right? So lots of depth in this inside corner. Don't be upset if uh, this is a hard concept to grab. It, it's a little bit of a weird one. So I'm taking my knife and I'm creating a V cut. So I'm coming in at an angle, coming in at, a, at a, the matching angle opposite direction, uh, opposite side rather. And I'm going to do the same thing here. A very shallow one, however, on this top line here, okay? So what I'm getting is a little V. You can see one, two. Let's clean that up a little. And the same thing here. Okay. The point I want to make here is I want to extra get extra depth in the inside part of this V, right? So where the, the uh, two angles meet together, like so. Let's see. Oh, why don't you focus? Okay, well, that's a little better, I guess. Very good. So, I'm gonna go in. Nice and deep in the inside corner. Oh, lost the camera, there it is. down like so beautiful take a little bit watch this this is that uh, scoop cut we've talked about before you can practice this on a scrap if you have it nearby but I'm gonna come in and scoop watch how my knife is scooping like so I'm turning it see the tool is moving 
into that corner like so same here like so beautiful all right and I continue that really I'm trying to make a smooth kind of cut on the inside corner of the eye and just get the mound of the eye to come out by really getting lots of depth in the inside corner so that I'm coming back in after I made that triangle cut and making a little bit more of a scoop out of that area okay now it's possible you could damage the tip of your tool if you make this cut by you know if you if, you, if you're not being cautious when you're making it so take your time let the tool do the cutting listen to the tool if it's chattering a whole bunch if it's resisting like don't fight it okay so there's the bottom of that v on this side and yeah it is taking about twice the time to do it on the this piece of wood as it would be in another piece all right that's looking pretty good Okay, all right, we're doing it, guys. Thanks for hanging in there. We're making progress. Not all of them are as easy as the basswood carvings, and that's what makes the basswood just so nice. So nice to work with. It's relieving, actually. Okay, so so this is the V, right? Talked about that. And uh, that's what we worked on for so long, <laughs> just a few minutes. And uh, now I want to take this uh, the bottom of this V and uh, turn this little thing into a triangle. So I want to connect them. I'm gonna do the same thing here with my knife. Sorry about the multiple lines there. And uh, like so, follow the that side of the V as well. This, this is the missing kind of element. And we're creating the mound of the eye in so doing, right? So, or in doing so rather. There we go, this one here. Boom, boom, see that? See how it's coming out? No, you say, there are too many lines. Get rid of the lines. I will, I will get rid of the lines. Okay. And I'm just softening the bottom of that triangle a little because it's gonna be kind of like part of the bag. Okay. All right. That's the idea. And see how that kind of creates the ball of the of the eye. Okay. Now I'm going to come in and I'm really going to put extra depth here along that line. So I'm coming in above this stuff here that we just made right in here. And this is where the eye is going to be. And I want it to look like he's peering out. So I'm going to go straight in and just take a little bit of a scoop out of the eye there like so. Just kind of open open his eyes ever so slightly. So I'm just removing this little wedge, almost a little sliver, almost a almond sliver, right? Of material out from in there, like so. That way he kind of looks as though he's peering out. At least that's our goal. And the same thing here, just coming straight in. Try and switch hands. Should have a glove on both hands in this case, shouldn't I? But here we are, breaking the rules. Yes, it is good if you're carving a lot to be able to use both hands in a pinch and stabilize your, you know, non-dominant hand with your other hand so that it, it has a chance, a fighting chance. So I'm doing the same thing here, a little sliver out of the eye. Very good. And 
see how it kind of looks as though he's sort of peering out. I'm gonna take his forehead back yet even a little more. Okay. Take a little bit out of the hair up here. Okay, so maybe I know what you're thinking right now. What happened to your glove? <laughs> well, I don't like it. I don't like the glove on this particular project, and so I'm not going to wear it. It's, uh, it's really uh, challenging to hold this piece of wood as firmly as I need to. It's a very, very um, hard um, material. And so it requires a lot of grip strength and it's hurting my hand to actually hold it. So kind of a strange scenario. I don't know if I recommend carving in a wood such as this. I don't know if it's ironwood or hickory or what it is. It's very, very hard and, and not friendly. This is a foreboding wood. It should be a forbidden wood. But uh, anyway, I digress. Really trying my best to be safe here. As uh, the harder the wood, sometimes the more dangerous it can be to carve because you're using more force. So I'm just cleaning up my hairline here, like so. Let's see, I wonder how the flex cut would do on this. It's one of my favorite knives. Uh, obviously, put that in the description. Oh my goodness. Okay, I am not... That's kind of shocking how nicely and this is a factory sharpening job with just a little bit of honing so yeah that's awesome um mm, did i speak too soon did i chip the tool <laughs> no okay that's good but it's not ideal you don't want to create those chirping noises because that means you're pushing the tool close to its you know close to its breaking point okay so anyway Wow, the, the flex cut's holding up very nicely. I'm surprised. <laughs> Should have been using that a little time. Need to dial in my uh, my uh, Helvy a little bit more. So it's actually shocking to me that uh, the, the flex cut is as good as it is, holds an edge as well as it does. I regret all the negative things I said about flex cut in the past. All right, so now just a little V. Um, if you will, sort of upside down V for the mouth here. Nothing too fair. Oh, and a little chip out. Look at that. Wasn't expecting that. That's okay. Wasn't enough to make a difference. You thought you ruined my day, didn't you, you old piece of wood? You old rotten piece of wood. Soft in random areas and hard in others. Oh, well, I'll get you my pretty... I'm gonna make you a nice little wood carving. Okay, so I'm just kinda creating this V. I'm carrying it off a little bit so that it uh, you know, just has a bit of character as it moves over. And the same here, I wanna create some of lines. Um, I'm gonna turn it around. Create some lines. Uh, see if I can set it on something. Uh, yeah, I guess that works. Like so. goodness what a piece of wood this is i've never dealt in a piece of wood this hard in my life i've worked in black locusts i've even done some little wood spirits in tropical hardwoods but this takes the cake it's just unforgiving and extraordinarily hard i had no clue uh i think the carvings i had done in this material in the past were with power tools and i now i see why i needed those power tools so anyway this is where we're at it's going to be a nightmare trying to get uh, 
too much hair detail in this, so we'll keep it minimal, but I'm just going to create some lines. My goodness. My goodness. Create some V-cuts. Sorry about the camera work, guys. Um, it's not the camera. It's the, it's the user, as you already knew that. Um, it's also the camera, you know. But I've got a nice camera coming. Uh, so hopefully better than this one. Because I broke my old camera. And uh, I'm actually just using my phone at this in this case. Uh, it's a nice phone, nonetheless, but, uh, anyway, just gonna come in here, make some grooves, okay? How would you guys feel if I got my power burr out and just did a tiny bit of work with that? Would that offend you? Because not everyone has a Dremel. I don't want to leave people out, the beginners out, and all the other folks who don't have that tool. But this is a nightmare of a piece of wood, so I'm tempted. What do you think? Would you rather I just stay knife? I'll stay knife. Okay. You convince me. I don't, look, I'm not trying to put you out here. I appreciate you tuning in. <laughs> Jeez, a sassy group you are. You know, these are free videos, remember that. <laughs> Okay. All right. So no, I uh, I'm just uh, my bad jokes. I know I'm done. My I'm gonna turn the uh, nostril around a little bit. Just coming around. See, I'm using the knife to just sort of catch the nostril, the side of it, like that. Okay, get a little character in his nose. And the same here. Just kind of wrap his nostril around. Easier said than done in this wood, though. Wowie wow. I may have dented the tip of this blade just a tiny bit. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think I did. And uh, make a few more lines in here. Clean up this nose. satisfaction out of this piece from carving it it's just almost too hard okay so you're just watching me struggle at this point okay and that's where I'm at so far huh <laughs> but that's okay we just kind of we roll with the punches right Just cleaning up underneath the eyes a bit, coming in. Okay, so this is where I'm at so far. You can see he's starting to come into shape there. His little nose coming out. All right, so I had enough of that. That was really a terrible piece of wood. So a little introduction to power carving. Um, will be uh, today. Of course, we're gonna make a more in-depth video. I'm not gonna talk a lot about it, but this is just a cheap Ryobi, uh, excuse my bumping, uh, you know, Dremel. I mean, actually not so cheap. I think this is a, a, the decent, the nicer version. Uh, so it might be a little bit more. I think it's probably 80 bucks. So yeah, that is a little expensive as an investment, but you don't need to have uh, a really high-end uh, Dremel like this one. This is, I believe, the uh, 1.4 amp. You can get a small, smaller one or a Dremel brand Dremel. All right, so this is the uh, ball cutting head that comes with the Ryobi. I'm gonna scooch over here a little bit closer to my power source. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this tool, this little ball, I don't know, it might be a quarter inch ball, uh, something like that, eighth inch ball, uh, more like an eighth inch probably. And I'm just gonna create some striations for hair because uh, I'm really not enjoying using hand tools on this. 
Wish I could express to you just how uh, unfun hand carving this is, but hopefully the principles are still there in terms of uh, getting the face in. And uh, who knows, maybe you too can pull out the old Dremel that you got, if you got one. And if you don't, well, it's kind of a nice little investment. So I have a dust collector. I've got a little mask on, and I'm going to do my best to uh, mix it. Hair detail. Let's do it. I'm going to turn the volume down for you guys so you don't have to uh, listen to this. All right, so I'm using the Dremel here to create S patterns, right? So I'm uh, making an effort to kind of break up the uh, kind of straight or flat planes that I've got there. So I'm doing two things. I'm using the ball to kind of make some uh, changes in major planes, meaning I'm using the ball to kind of re uh, gradually remove and move layers of hair uh, inward uh, and uh, to reduce certain parts of the hair. But I'm also trying to uh, create the grooves which make up the separations in the hair. So for each group of hair that I create, for each line rather of hair I create, I want a parallel line that kind of uh, creates the shape that goes around it or, or, or next to it so that so that uh, those two cuts are not the hair itself but the space in between those two cuts hopefully that makes sense uh, so <clears throat> that's the uh, that's the ideal right now I'm, uh, I'm just going around the piece and I'm just creating texture and I'm uh, making these little groupings so remember that two cuts makes a hair the, the hair it's, is not the cut itself so I'm just making these little groupings of cuts to kind of create these little bumps that indicate hairs. And uh, yes, I'm going to kind of come in to the uh, part of the uh, receding part of the hairline there on either side and kind of remove that area a bit more. And uh, you'll see in just a bit, I use the Dremel to kind of undercut a little bit just the uh, temple area of the face. But uh, otherwise, I mostly just focus on uh, getting that thing um, textured and detailed.
All right, so we got some nice hair movement. I'm gonna use a touch of sandpaper, I know. Crime of all crime, sandpaper, right? Just to smooth out the face though, because I did use the uh, burr of the ball a little bit on the face and I just don't want it to leave too, um, too rough of a surface on the face. So I'm just gonna come through here. And just lightly sand the surface, scuff it up a bit. <laughs> really just smooth it out more than scuff it up. And, and just get the character of the face out. And that is cool. <laughs> you have to admit, uh, as much of a struggle as it was, we've got a nice little face in this piece of wood. And so, yes, it was worth the work, but it was a real trouble. And so, uh, just know that if you're out there and you're hand carving just a stick that you found out in the woods and it gives you a serious fight that you're not alone and uh, you can push through and uh, the power of a Dremel is, is significant. It's significant. Let's give this a, uh, a little bit of a spray. I'm going to gently touch the hair as well. And uh, yeah, I could work on this for hours longer, but... Gotta know when to say enough. <laughs> Excuse me, blowing in the camera. Instead of the carving. Let's give this a little spray and see what happens. This is a uh, spar urethane, oil-based. Oh, this is not the one I wanted to use, though. It's an oil-based finish. Hold on one second. Let me grab the one I meant. No, yeah, I found the right one. This is polycrylic clear matte. This is a water-based finish. I did not want to use an oil-based finish. Uh, I reached for the wrong one and didn't notice it until the final hour. So let's spray this, see how it looks. All right, I got a little heavy on the spray, uh, knowing that uh, the first coat will soak in fairly well. And if there's extra, you can use a little brush to dab off that extra. All right, folks, thanks again for watching. I hope this was of uh, some value to you, that you learned something, and that uh, you try this and take it further than I did, and don't use this wood, whatever this God-forsaken wood is. Don't use it. Uh, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. And if you want to learn how to carve faces like this, but uh, with more depth and realism, sort of like well, these projects here, check out the uh, link in the description below for my online carving school. That's it. Thanks again.